Hey everybody, welcome back to Mike's Wooden Things and Stuff. My buddy Marv's got a couple of really old golf clubs. Um, and that sounds like a weird way to start a video, because what do you care? Um, you don't know my buddy Marv. You probably don't care about golf. Um, <laughs> but he, showed, he sent me a picture on Facebook of these uh, old golf clubs that he's got. And I said, oh, those are cool. And they're like sentimental, right? I think they were they're his dad's or his grandpa's or something. I said, you should put those up on the wall and then and display them. And then I thought, well, why don't I make something for him to put them up on the wall and display them with? So that's what we're going to do today. We, we aren't going to do that at all. I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to make them. I got a couple that went down to the lumber store and uh, I wanted to find cherry, but I didn't like their cherry. So I am got a couple of pieces of oak that I think are going to look really nice. I'm going to turn them into kind of a shadow box kind of thing for him to put these golf clubs up on the wall with some little hooks in them. Uh, so golf club, old antique, nostalgic golf club shadow box day. That's what today is. Old antique, nostalgic golf club shadow box day. Is that weird? Well, I don't care. So I picked the flattest uh, of the oak boards at the lumber store that I could that fit the dimensions that I needed so that I could just uh, start by skip planting them down and I put them in the vise I put them in the leg vise and then I used my hold fast to attach it to the give me some more support on the side of the bench and uh, so that I could just get one edge I didn't feel like using my uh, my jointer today uh, it's I haven't been happy with its performance the last little while so I've been doing this getting one edge at least straight enough to ride along the fence of the table saw so that I could parallel up the other edge and then I go back and uh, nudge the fence over and do the side that I hand planed just to make sure that it's at 90 and everything like that then I marked out my parts uh, I don't remember what it actually was I think it was somewhere around 49 or so by 12 ish inches deep um, then I cut the parts down and then I was essentially now you've got a box but I decided to try a fancy new kind of joinery that I've never tried before I wasn't brave enough to try my first dovetails on this piece but I decided to do some sort of proud finger joint type things with dowels as accents and stuff so we'll see how that goes uh, marked them out uh, used a little spacer to give myself the amount proud that I wanted and I just took them over to the bandsaw and notched them out and you flip it over so that you got even fingers on either side and then you raise the blade of the table saw up to where that notch is and you knock out those corners and then the inside notch is actually a little bit more complicated than that. You mark that onto the board that's going to join up with it. You mark the waist, mark the joint that so that it matches up. That is joint A. Uh, do that with all of them so you don't get messed up later. Don't ask me why I know that. Uh, then you notch them out just like this. I mean, this is how I did it anyway. There's lots of ways to do it, I'm guessing, but I decided just to run it over the table saw and just curve the hell out of it. And then uh, my little sanding stick takes care of the little ridges left by the table saw blade. I should get one of those uh, flat topped uh, table saw blades. That's what I should do. Like, instead of those alternating tooth table saw blades, I should get a flat one. Anyway, then we sand all the parts up to uh, approximately final, not uh, not right to final. I think I went to 180 or something here. And uh, yeah, chamfer the edges because they're going to be sticking out. So I decided to add a little chamfer to those um, pointy bits. I guess let's call them fingers. They're kind of finger joints, I guess. They're pretty fat fingers. They're big sausage fingers. And then I uh, got to route the groove for the back. It's a stopped groove on the side pieces and a through groove on the other ones. Uh, and then off to the lumber place. Uh, this is the orange box store and I was not pleased with the selection of quarter inch plywood. So I went to uh, the lumber, uh, the good lumber store 
and they had a much better selection and their worst piece was better than the orange store's best piece so and it was like a buck fifty cheaper so go get a piece of quarter inch plywood measure it actually on the piece itself as opposed to measuring the piece and then marking it from the measurement uh, again don't ask me how I know this just measure stuff off the piece that it needs to go in don't use a tape measure and then no it's bad and you just cut it down cut it oversized sneak up on it um, start a little bit bigger than it, you think it needs to be and then work your way down uh, then I painted the panel black I was th I was conflicted a little bit as to what I was gonna do with the back piece um, I thought about using like felt and it just nothing that I came up with sounded like I was gonna like the result so I just went with black paint um, we'll see how that worked out in a minute here uh, uh, foreshadowing uh, and this glue up was kind of a an asshole too um, I made some curved clamping calls to get to the, the pressure on the corners because the pokey bits sticking out couldn't let me anyway uh, that whole clip of glue up actually was like 18 minutes long so that should tell you something then we mark off where I want my dowels to go cut them up on the bandsaw just quarter inch dowel quarter inch uh, Forstner bit and uh, drill a hole plug it cut it off it's uh it's actually one of my favorite ways of joining things together is with dowel pegs because I think it adds a nice little nice little touch it shows that you uh, you know for those of you who care that it's uh, not screwed together it's all wooden fasteners and it, it kind of serves a similar role to screws so then we're just about done we got to finish sand I took it up to I believe 220 240 actually probably 240 I don't think I have any 220 sandpaper and then I used a spray basically Minwax wipe on poly in a spray can and this is what happened look at this I got a couple of drops of the stuff like it was splooged out of the can and made a mess of I don't know it like ate the paint or something so I had to go back and uh, touch up those areas with uh, acrylic paint it, and sort of blend it into the rest of it it turned out okay I was pretty frustrated at that point and I was actually gonna paint the whole thing with the acrylic but it turned out I didn't need to I could just touch it up and blend it in oh here's the uh, the French cleat bit and you cut a piece of three-quarter inch plywood to fit the space and then cut at 45 degree angle that piece of plywood pocket hole the bigger of the pieces this is how I did it anyway and then uh, that turns into a French cleat the uh, these are the hooks for the the golf clubs to actually sit on I just used some scrap oak cut them three inch pieces or so marked the center and did the same thing that I did with dowel pegs on the finger joints just drill a hole and then uh, yeah that dowel will go in and then it'll just stick into the back of the box. Then I used Forstner bit to punch a hole into the, the things, took it over to the bandsaw, which for some reason I didn't record, to uh, cut the little scoop out, and then I sanded it, and then I got my little holder dealies for golf clubs. And then you're basically done. Oh, I guess I got, you know, you gotta round off the little edges and stuff. And uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, here we go installing the French cleat. Now you can see how a French cleat goes if you don't know. So that piece attaches to the box and then the other piece attaches to the wall and the two 45 degree bits attach to each other when it gets hung on the wall and it's a really, really sturdy way to hang things on the wall. And this piece is heavy, so I knew it needed something sturdy. And here's me thinking that this little 90 degree angle thing is actually gonna help me drill these holes straight, but. I don't know if it helped or not, probably not, but I put it there just as a little guide. And uh, then, yeah, those go in and we got a box. All right, so there is my new, well, not mine, the thing that I made, the uh, golf club, antique nostalgic golf club shadow box wall hanging display unit. That's what it's called. Uh, <laughs> it was fun. 
it, I struggled it at times, but uh, it turned out pretty good. I like the through exposed proud whatever we want to call them finger joints I guess uh, on the corners that was fun to try for the first time I like my little oak hooks for the clubs um, I learned some things and uh, yeah it was good got it done just in time it's leaving tomorrow with my parents who happen to be going in the general direction of my friend who I'm sending it to which is why I had to get it done before tomorrow and it's ready to go. So, thanks for watching. See you next time when I make something else. Bye for now.